Hi, Barry. How are you doing? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm good, mate. Good, good, good. So, um, we keep, we keep looking having very, these... You're looking very sun-tanned there, mate. Have you been no. playing in the garden? Yeah? It, it's, it's been nice. Well, it's been fantastic weather. I've been in the garden lots. It's been good. Been good. Good man. Good man. Well, I'm glad we arranged this. Yes. To chat through some stuff. Yep, yep. Obviously, we um, we had a few we had a few dates planned with for seminars and things with uh, with yourself um, on splints and parafunction, um, and you did, did you, you, lots of the uh, um, not seminars, the meetings like British Den- the, the Scottish Dentistry Show that we you were supposed yep. to be speaking at. And, I know. Uh, I know it's a shame actually. I was I was really looking forward to that, but I'm sure they'll replace it and they'll do something different, won't they? Yeah, yeah, they were definitely. Will. So all these little things that we had, we had planned, we were now quashed. Um, obviously, everyone's in the same boat, and we um, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're healthy, we're, we've got lots of good things to look forward to. Um, I've been eating and drinking too much, mate. So oh. I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm healthy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, as you as you know, my wife's a nutritionist, so um, I've, I've, so you're healthy. So we've, we've been eating really, really well. Uh, occasions, you know, we've, we've smashed the chocolate and we've had, we've had a couple of curry nights and which tend to be, uh, you know, you have a few beers with that, don't you? But with drinking wise, it, it's just so easy, isn't it? To, the sun shining, the kids are out playing in the garden. Why wouldn't you have a gin and tonic? You know, why wouldn't you have a glass of wine? It's... So I, I, yeah, I did, I, I think one of the dentists in one of the Facebook groups had said something about drinking us. Yeah, my drinking level's at like a, about pirate level. I'm not quite there yet. And I'm not having to put rum on my cornflakes <laughs> in the morning, but I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, I, uh, I, see, I see you've been decorating. Yes, yes. Do you know how I know that? Go on. You've got paint on your arm, mate. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit of white gold. Right. But let's 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 talk a bit of dentistry, mate. Yes. What's what's the aim of you and I having a chin wag for the next forty five minutes or so? Yeah, just I guess just to, to um, I think uh, well, I know uh, in seeing some of the stuff you've been speaking about, and obviously the courses you do for confident dentist, um, communication to patients, and and uh, trying to 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 get dentists to communicate better with the patients and to inevitably to, to run better practices and be more profitable. And now <laughs> I've decided to think about how we could probably get back into practice and me as a lab owner, how I can help dentists um, open their practices back up again and how they can start generating some business and revenue again. Um, so it'd be a good time to, to touch base and see what your thoughts are of the future. Um, yes, absolutely. Dentistry is going to change. Um, lab, lab, the lab life is going to change somewhat. But I'm, I'm quietly confident, and I hope we can look back on this video in a few months, a year's time, and say, yeah, we, you know, we're right to be confident. Because I think there are things that certainly during lockdown, where practices are completely closed. I think when practices open back up again, we've all got teeth. And there are a lot of people out there that are going to have had lots of dental problems. And there's going to be things that we, we definitely can't do, I think. But I think it's now time to focus yeah. on the things that we can do. And the stuff that you've done for us in the past with the lectures and the, the yeah. splints is a, is a fantastic um, thing to, to, to talk about. Um, practice either if you're not doing that kind of stuff, you it's should a, be. It's a wonderful it's a wonderful revenue stream whilst serving patients. You know, it's, it's fairly clear at the moment. Now I know we're still waiting for Boris's big announcement coming this Sunday, right? So uh, today is what Wednesday. Yeah. Um, we've weekend, we don't weekend know Wednesday. We, we are, it's weekend Wednesday. And, and so, everything. right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, weekend Wednesday. So what we are, definitely not going to be able to do for a period of time however long that is is use handpieces in patients mouths um 
I saw a report recently saying that if there's a good chance that it can't be passed on by aerosol, but until that's absolutely proven, yeah. then clearly as a profession, we're going to be very, very careful. So I think there is an opportunity for us to take, you know, you could see this, we do this in language skills. When you think about a problem, yeah. right? So in fact, do, do this with me now, would you, right? Yeah. Imagine that you're a dentist, um, as I am. Imagine if you've had no income, as I haven't. And imagine that you think of this whole going back and this whole COVID thing as a problem. And when you think about a problem, the sort of words that you come out with about a problem are all negative. You know, people feel stuck in a problem. Um, it's worrying. It's fearful. Uh, they, they can't see the wood for the trees. There's all sorts of this negativity, right? Yeah. If you then help somebody go, right, let's change the wording in our heads from problem to challenge, the language that we relate to a challenge is different, a little bit more positive. People like a challenge. A challenge is something that you can get over. A challenge is something that you can take on, that you can get some enthusiasm for, you know, get a bit of life based on it and really kind of get the bit between the teeth. Mm -hmm. So talking about the situation with COVID and going back, if you think of it as a problem, you just pull yourself down. If you think of it as a challenge, you pick yourself up. So now if you think of it as an opportunity and you go, right, how is it an opportunity? What's, in a, in a, what's it an opportunity for? Who is it an opportunity for? There is an opportunity here for us to change aspects of our business, change aspects of dentistry. You know, we could be considering uh, marketing, improving and communicating about the things that we do that is non-aerosol based. This fits very beautifully into your amazing lab because that is short-term ortho, you know, retainers, um, splint therapy, SCIs, uh, whitening, whitening trays. Now, again, we need guidance by those that know, which is not the CDO, but, you know, those that know within dentistry will give us guidance. I think we ought to start thinking as small businesses, right, how do we start to market to our clients about all these things that we are able to do. Let's do our examinations. If you've got a scanner, for goodness sake, start scanning every patient gratis. Absolutely. Scan their mouths, get that logged in, track time, so that when we're capable of doing aerosol, you know, let's say we're doing stuff in 2021, we got this amazing scan that we've taken, uh, and it was we took it in July 2020, and let's refer back. So there's lots that we could do to add a lot of value to our patients, which actually will ultimately add value. It might take time to add value to the business. And yet I believe it will add value to our businesses. Yeah, totally agree. I totally agree with you. And, and I think I listened to one of your, your interviews with Nikki, Nikki Rowland. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're talking about the, the changing the, the terminology or phrases. Now you put yourself across, whether it's been, you've seen a problem or, or a, a an opportunity i think yeah. you and i are in both similar similar groups in on facebook and you can sit on on one of the forums and you know it's the end of the world we're, we, you know we're practices are closing left right and center and we, we can't survive and then you look at the leadership one where nick is in there and you see a group of people that are looking forward to the future and looking at how we can improve practices when we open back up again and uh, and i and i, and I don't get me wrong, I, I've, I've had a bit of a wobble. I, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I thought, God, this is not looking good. Re, re -thought, yeah. thought it through, had a bit of a rethink, almost a reset, and thinking, you know what, There's a, there is a great opportunity here in that we are a, we're, we're quite a unique lab at S4S, and, you know, we don't do crowns, bridges, dentures, and that kind of stuff. What is, you know, what is the gonna, what is there going to be a, a, a lot of, and... Um, in the future of dentistry and I think there's going to be a lot of these patients rocking up to practice where they've been really struggling whether that's with it's simpler and we, we, we're going to joke we'll joke about this and we have done um, people spending more time at home with their partners snoring and sleep apnea is going to be a huge problem absolutely um, you know Parafun that's para snoring. parafunctional control para absolutely all the things um, uh, and one of the things that came to me I was chatting you, you you're, you're, uh, you've met Ricky, Ricky Agarwal, the fellow Scouser. Lovely Scouser. Um, 
we, we, we're chatting and we're actually going to have a, ch- a chat this afternoon because um, he, he's got some ideas on his, his stuff on mental health at the minute, but he's got some ideas Absolutely. about um, how he can introduce or start getting smile line patients through the door bef- before, theoretically through the door before they actually enter the practice or are allowed to enter the practice. And he's got some great ideas. Um, and he's, you know, just chatting through these ideas about um, – how we can we can engage and, and speak to patients before even before the lockdowns lift, lifted. Um, so it's, it's, it's just seeing these opportunities that we can, and it'll it'll step you know it'll allow us to come to the forefront. You know, there's, let's face it, we're not going to be driven by the, the CDO or GDC. They're not going to tell us. Um, they're not going to help us in any way to 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 build our businesses again, are they? Um, yeah. So it's it's going to be left to us to do that. I think it it might be worth, um, I mean, this video hopefully will be helping some people when they, uh, when they get about, it might be worth us writing kind of something down and, and having it available to download just some ideas and you know, what we come up with, people will add more to Yeah. and what we come up with, some people will shoot down. You know, there's always the naysayers, right? Yeah if we write this stuff down, it might just give somebody an idea that they hadn't thought about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being able to, to use your scanner means you can, you can utilize that a lot more mm-hmm. and you can send that to you. You're not sending impressions. I don't know what the rules are going to be right now, but you know, scanning is clearly a really great way of do of doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, but even impressions, I wonder if they're, you know, they're sterilized, as per instructions that they may be allowed as well. But yeah, non aerosol producing dental treatments, um, looking after doing headache, do muscle exams, you know, start, take this opportunity as a dentist to absolutely hone the best patient examination you can, yeah. you know, knock their bloody socks off with the high caliber and quality of your examination. Yeah. Um, so that patients go, oh, I've not had that done before. To develop your co-pilot system so that the patient is hearing the value of that examination that's going on above them and start feeling muscles and sowing seeds of the fact that you're looking for the signs of parafunction. You're not just reacting to the symptoms. Yeah. Because as you know, Matt, I don't know if everybody else watching knows, as you know, the statistics say that 26% of the population parafunction. Yet those statistics from McFarlane in uh, the, the massive study in Cheshire were based on symptomatic patients. Mm-hmm. Yet when you look at some of the American studies and a study done over here, when you look at the studies based on signs of parafunction, it's nearly like 96% yeah. of patients. So if we as a profession started looking for the signs of parafunction, not only are we going to serve our patients by providing them with something that protects them from parafunction, musculature and dentition wise, we're going to be reducing the problems that they have further down the line. Um, So yeah, I wholeheartedly recommend people go and watch the video training to understand a little bit more about the muscle exam, the muscle exam video is available. Muscle exam, you know, the diagnosis, the looking and treatment of either using a chair side. There's another thing, a chair side SCI. I can very happily do that. You know, once the lockdown's gone, there's no aerosol. It's very easy to do. Yep. It's a, it's, it's high profit and it's serving the patient really well. So I'd encourage dentists to be doing loads more muscle exams, bringing the patient on the journey of, I'm discovering that you're grinding and clenching. Did you see, uh, I don't know if you saw Pav, um, Pav post, I see, he posted something on Facebook the other day. He, um, you know, Pav, obviously, Pav used to do some lecturing stuff for us. He's now doing a bit more in implants. But he, he, he messaged me on, uh, it was like a, a really early Saturday morning, I think, saying, Matt, please help. Wife's uh, struggling really bad. She's, 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 she's migraines. Yeah, so we, we sent him a, we sent him a little SCI kit, which he did at home and made, it, made it an SCI. Um, so yeah, that's, sorted that's, his wife out. So, yeah, sorted and uh, yeah, uh, all, all good. So absolutely, that, so the chair side SCIs are a great way that you know. It, again, we'll see on Sunday whether what what if any restrictions are going to be lifted for dental practices. Um, I do hope that some are. I mean, some common sense 
um, needs to pre- prevail. I think there were there was a great article by, did you, I don't know if you read the blog by Dominic Ohule? Um, yes. About the... He's a good, he's a good man. Oh, my goodness. A really well-cited um, piece they wrote about non-aerosol-generated procedures or aerosol-generating procedures. And, you know, it makes sense. If you think about it, as dentists, you guys were seeing patients in March still, yet there's not not a massive cohort of dentists that have, that have got coronavirus. And there's not a massive, well... <laughs> Yeah, you know. Yeah, maybe. No, yeah. I, I don't think. I mean, I I read the report last. Was it tail end of last week? I, I, honestly, mate, I don't even know what day it is. I know. Um, it is when it's crazy. It's, Whether it, but, recently, yes. I read the report <laughs> that it's not transmitted, as I mentioned, by aerosol. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see more about that because yeah. if that is true, fundamentally, that is brilliant news for the mm-hmm. profession. Um, yeah. They think you know what they're sort of saying is it's down to touch um and not through aerosol so and that's borne out by the you know the the lack of the number of, i know there are a few very poorly dentists yeah. you know ones you know we've mentioned on the forums quite a bit and he's actually recovering which is wonderful yeah. but you're right when you consider if aerosol was a major source of transferring the virus there'd be a lot more dental yeah. dentists and dental nurses given the quality of the PPE that we generally wear, which is naff, um, you'd think that there'd yeah. be more down. So I'm hoping that they see some sense and, and do a bit more research and, and, you know, unpick that one for us. Definitely. It needs to be done. I mean, it's, it's almost we've become a bit of a forgotten profession or p- forgotten group. Yeah. Um, most of us, uh, certainly most of our, of us who are private associates are getting absolutely nothing no income since well for me since january because i was off uh on well yeah but uh anyone else in my position won't have had an income and no help from the government we, there's really not a great deal we could have done with loans it's um it's not been easy and i think you're right i think we have been forgotten and the conversations there's the odd conversation you hear going on you know maybe on bbc and stuff but nobody's really interested you you know that um the, the next potential future prime minister um, is uh, it kind of ruled us all out, really, didn't he? Yeah. Well, we, let's talk, let's talk about changes. I mean, it's, there's enough of you, and there's enough of um, obviously as a lab owner, there's a lot of dental technicians and labs that are directly, not even indirectly, directly affected by. If you guys aren't practicing seeing patients, we've got no income. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we've, 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 we've got to, we've, uh, and you've probably seen as well, I'm in several of the groups as well, where we, you know, we're in this together. We, we've got, if we, if we can help you as a lab to somehow get to, well, we'll start back up again to, to, to help you out and get things moving Let's again. Let's do some, why, why don't we do this, mate? Why don't we, um, why don't we do some short uh, videos? Uh, and I'm very happy to do this, short videos on, uh, providing muscle examination, yep. a diagnosis, things to look for, how to make a chair side. I'll I'll do all of those. Let's yep. provide those free. Yep. So that you know people can start to look at, you know, because in my practice we charge four hundred and thirty nine quid for, for, for an SCI. Yeah. For an SCI, whether that's laboratory made, which is my preference, right? Yes. To use a lab made one yep. because they're a little bit sexier, they're nicer, they're they're just nicer. Uh, but I charge the same because I don't want to differentiate between the two with the patient. Um, but I prefer to use, you know, lab made. Yeah. Um, but that is, I'm not being funny, but that is an, a, an easy way of generating an income that is also symbiotically serving. You know, I want to be doing dentistry that is evidence-based, that is helpful to my patient, that is beneficial to my patient and the patient wants. Yep. And I do a lot of SCIs and they fit into all of those categories. Yep. So we should be, we should be encouraging dentists to consider, you know, doing more of these because they're just, you know, I, I can't live without them, right? Me neither. And Helen's the same as, as you know, as well. It's, um, you're absolutely right. And, and the, you know, well, you say 439 quid for a splint, the, the cost savings that if you leave your dentistry untreated, if you were smashing teeth left, right and center, we all know that the cost of a crown or a veneer or whatever 
is going to cost significantly more than that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. and, and if you've ever had toothache uh, from a cracked tooth, if you've ever had that. Uh, I, had it, I had it in the new year. I've never, had, I've never had toothache before, but I fractured a tooth. Oh my word, I was in agony. Yeah. So, and, uh, it's horrible. So yeah, I can now speak not just from knowledge, but can, uh, not just from you know what I learned, but actually what I've been through. Yeah. And I say to my patients, you know, that I didn't wear my splint for two nights, and I fractured lower right seven, mm -hmm. and then it got a pulpitis. It got infected. It was a horrible thing to go through. So, so yeah, yeah the, I'm uh, I'm all for helping. If anybody needs, if anybody needs any help in implementing. The use of SCIs in their practice. Then let's let's talk. Let's get them, get them together. Let's get on a Zoom call. Absolutely, yeah. Well, we, we can we can certainly organise that. On um, just just so um, this is and this this Zoom meeting wasn't at all designed to be a selling stuff um, Zoom meeting. But your we did video your course. We recorded your course um, in yeah. Birmingham. Was that last year? I think it was last year. It was. It was in the um, motorcycle museum, wasn't it, or something? It was indeed. Yeah, that really nice. Build. Yeah, funny, funny little building on the roundabout. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The, so, so that's available online, right? It's available, available online. What's yeah. Price on that? Yeah. So we did a. We've done a, um, a an offer for anyone who's stuck at home wanting to do some CPD, and it's we can do it's a fifty percent discount off it. So if you use, you can use my code um, ME fifty. Uh, that's in capitals M E for Matt Everett. Yeah, unique um, M E fifty, and you can get it for you can get fifty percent half price. Uh, you can do that for any of the seminars as well. And hopefully, sometime in the in the in the foreseeable, we'll we'll, we'll have you back doing some courses again for us. Um, oh, I'd love that, mate. We'll have some great groups. The one thing that's not included in that days that was day that was recorded yeah. was some of the stuff that I've. Uh, put out there and offered and that is the muscle exam video and a couple of other bits yeah. so I will create if anybody's interested you can have the videos that supplement the training course that you go to with ME50 you can have the stuff off me gratis because there's two or three things that would just add value to the course when you purchase it so I will create a page that is www.theconfidentdentist.com forward slash S for S. Brilliant. I'll, I'll do that before this video goes live. And on there, I'll put a um, muscle exam video. And I'll also put my video on my analogy for parafunction on the fence posts. Brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate that. Pleasure, well, pleasure, just, pleasure. just thought I'd let you know as well, we had a really nice um, email through from a um, dentist who had been on your course. Uh, the last, which was the last one you did? Was it in London? London, yeah, the BDA. Um, yeah, really nice a, a guy. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he sent in a really nice email saying he really enjoyed the, the NLP, NLP stuff he did, the communication stuff he did at the end. Um, Brilliant. So, uh, and we, we were, were banding a few ideas around as to when we do get back up and running again and running courses yep. um, to actually advertise that a bit more and, and, and have a really defined section on it. Because I think, and then I think if people... Some people don't want to do that kind of stuff, and and it's all fine. But there are a lot, yeah. The, the feedback was great, and you know, I've I've been on your confident dentist courses probably at least twice, maybe three times now, um, right. three times, yeah. And I pick up something new every time, uh, yeah. and you know, communication wise, something we don't do very well to patients, and, and certainly, yeah. So this is the other thing, right? I mean, we mentioned. My, what I think are the opportunities for us to do when we go back to work. Yeah. I think for me, the success of all of our practices and whether, I mean, I'm an associate now, as you know, I sold my practice into a group. Um, so whether you're a practice owner or an associate, I think the key to success for 2021, 2020, 2021, is going to be to upskill yourself on the soft skills. Yeah. You know, there's, there's almost now, you know, we, we as a profession, we're really good at upskilling ourselves in the clinical side of the stuff. And lots of the people that I coach in dentistry are the ones that are upskilling themselves in the things that they're already skilled in. 
and not upskilling themselves in the things that they kind of not that good at or don't enjoy doing, which actually I would say don't do the things you don't enjoy anyway. That being said, none of us are taught to communicate. And, you know, when I learned some language skills 12 years ago, and I just learned to get out my own way, it added two grand a week to the bottom line. And so I'm very keen that I, we get the communication into dentistry to help improve things in their relationships with patients, but it also has a knock-on effect uh, in general life and relationships at home as well. So I am dead keen to get more of my training out there to help yeah. the profession, to help people sell more dentistry, which helps the patient. Because if the patient, you know, the word sell comes from sellier to serve. If we have a mindset of serving, then our patients, they, they feel that they they can see that that's what we're doing they can hear you know the genuine advice that we're giving people and they purchase more dentistry okay. so i am keen that we do more of that mate and you know whether we get together and i'd love to do that back at your place in the training room whether we do it as a day or we do a two-day job you know let's let's build the community and helping them to communicate more clearly which is good for the whole profession it works for everybody it does, it does. I, well, I think the last course you did, or your last Confident Dentist course you did at Sheff in Sheffield, there were a good mix of, we had some lab owners there, we had Ashburn, Ginesh was there. Um, yeah. We had a good, really good, good mix of people. So, and I think, um, you know, breaking our barriers or, or communicating better between dentists and, and technicians and nurses is, is fantastic. I, mean, well. I think I would, I would love um, to help run a, well, I'd love to run, a course on the improvement of communication between dentists and lab lab technicians. Yeah. I think um, it would it would really help to to enable both sides to understand that you know six words on a piece of paper it's not enough not enough information. Six words that many? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I have once gone SCI please. So I've done two words. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think. You know, oftentimes I think us dentists think that our technicians are mind readers. Oh, we are. Um, <laughs> can, you, can you tell what I'm thinking now? <laughs> probably. <laughs> You're probably right, actually, mate. So, yeah, that would be good as well, to help, help people improve their communication by understanding how other people process stuff, yeah. right? So, yeah, all in all, I think there's a lot that we can do to help help people. But actually, I'd also like to say, if there's anybody chosen to watch this firstly thanks ever so much yeah. appreciate you watching secondly if there's something you need a bit of help on reach out send an email yeah. you know yeah. touch base with with either matt or me and you know if there's something that we can help you with we'll help you mm -hmm. um or if we don't know we'll certainly direct you in the direction of somebody that we believe would be better to yeah. serve you than us um you know collectively these two young chaps here you know we've we've got a fair handle on things and um with matt you know, owning the lab and being part of the lab world for the last 20 years and me being a dentist and owning a business and being an associate, I think pretty much we can answer a lot of your questions. Yeah. Yeah. Questions come in. Yeah. Let's get together and answer the questions yeah. like this. Yeah. Um, I genuinely, you know, let's wrap up in two minutes. I genuinely think that we could serve a lot of dentists and particularly for me, you guys as a lab, mm -hmm. by helping them understand parafunction more and sell more SCIs and snoring devices. And, you know, I think maybe it would be wise you and I putting, and uh, Anmar? Anmar? Sorry. sorry. Who's, who's, who's the Amma. snoring guy? Yeah, uh, Amma, yeah. Amma. Yeah. Uh, and just doing a short, you know, 15-minute montage of... Yeah snoring, parafunction, and solutions yeah. um, that can be stuck on social media or something so that we can highlight it. Because I think people and bloody smile line, you know, these are the things that, you know, what a great position you are in really as a lab compared to others. Because these are the things that we're going to be able to do from day one. So we ought to be doing something about it. The lab, you know, dentists should be thinking about, you know, free orthodontic cons consultations. Yeah. post covid yeah. you know get them in have a look scan them you know or or you know can't be necessary may, might not be free but if then if they scan and send for a for you guys to to work the case up then they're charging you know 
whatever, 75 quid, yeah. 100 quid, and just being really sensible. I think the case, the case is, and plus it's over a period of time, which means yeah. people can spread the cost out. I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, on, on that as well, one of the things that we were, were talking about is um, uh, because because we, we are we're in Sheffield, and you, you can you can speak to us. What we're, what we're going to do is is we have to tweak the, the treatment plans in such as that even if even if you can open up and you can't use a handpiece, we can plan the cases so that you can um, start off simple. We'll start doing expansion without any IPR, without any attachments and then tweak it so that if in, t- if in six months time we need to add attachments we can do that we'll just it's, that's the next phase oh that's that but that's great isn't it yeah. that's a, that's that's brilliant yeah sorted mate yeah so uh, yeah there's there, there are there are opportunities for us all um it's not all doom and gloom it's an opportunity for us to all reset a bit um and perhaps yeah. uh, certainly one of the things for us is um as we've been doing for our courses we're trying to get dentists to think a bit different, aren't we? We're trying to get them to think, rather than pick up their handpiece and open up the tooth and start doing a root canal, is actually look at what else is going on. Look at the bigger picture, look at the patient. And now's a great opportunity. While you can't pick your handpiece up as a first call. Take more time, yeah. Do it. Do your exams. Explore, explore more options. Find their deep emotional drivers of you know, yeah. dentistry. Sell to those and serve to those. And you've got a patient lifelong. And... You've got a patient that will pay for the treatment that you're advising because uh, you've built trust, you've built rapport, you've spent more time. I think it's there are opportunities within this pandemic, uh, and I think it's the the fortune favors the brave. And by brave, it just means spending a bit more time with patients when they come in. Yeah. It's not that brave, really, is it? No, I can do that. I can do that. Other than that, we'll start a gin distillery or something. <laughs> oh, let's do that anyway. <laughs> Brewery seems to be doing all right. We've, we've, we've got um, just so we can wrap up, we'll, we'll give it one more minute and we'll wrap up. But I'll tell you a bit of history. So, um, um, the village we've moved to, or, or where we are, it's called Fulo, but we're on the outskirts of the, the a very famous village called Eam. Now, if you remember back to your uh, history days at school, Eam was the epicenter of the Black death the plague in 1666 wow so, so you've just moved in to the place that had the first pandemic yeah. during the second pandemic yeah and the the whole village uh, so they've been on they've been on tv quite a bit this these um last few weeks so we moved in three days before we went into lockdown um and the, the um the, the original guys in 1666 did the lockdown so they, they said we to stop the pandemic spreading from Eam we're going to lock the village down we're going to lose some villagers some of them are going to die this was a vicar Mon Pesson. some of them are going to die we're going to lose some of them but we'll stop spreading it elsewhere so the message stay at home it's back, back to, yeah back to that's where you stayed at home mate <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah the, the school that kids have now joined but they're not they haven't started yet is Eam Primary School and on their gates is the Ring of Ring of Roses song because that's the, the song that came from oh, I don't know if you knew that one the Black Death yeah so Ring of Ring of Roses is the song that they start and yeah. just to finish now so on Friday for VE Day the local brewery in Eam are doing some some um, special beers for VE Day so I've ordered Six pints of um, we all fall down. <laughs> What's a brilliant name! <laughs> yeah. How many pints do you need before you fall down? Well, it depends on what strength it is because if it's a strong one, I might not need many, mate. Need many. <laughs> <laughs> the aim is we try and drink your. Anyway, it's been great to speak to you, Barry. Um, oh, yeah, brilliant. Good with it, mate. Let's do it again. If anybody's got any questions yeah. and, and they come in, let's let's get our heads together, mate. Cool, fantastic. Well, have a, have a lovely day. Have a nice weekend. Uh, I say a weekend because it's, it is weekend Wednesdays at our house. Weekend Wednesday. Love it. It's not a hump day anymore, is it? No, no, no. So, all good anyway. Take care. Love to you all. And we'll speak Thanks, soon. Bye now. All right, take care. Bye-bye.